get full access to RFR only on Patreon. Become a member of the RFR Patreon community to get more Rebel Force Radio. Bonus shows and content are available right now only at patreon.com slash rebel force radio. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. This is Rebel Force Radio. Your source for the Force. Star Wars news and commentary. With Jason Swank and Jimmy Mack. I've seen Star Wars 500 times. Star Wars number one! This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. Now it's time for Rebel Force Radio. We would be honored if you would join us. Star Wars Celebration 2019, live in Chicago. As we broadcast from the Alulu Brewery and Pub, special thanks to our friend Paul. Paul, our host for tonight. I guess we're in the Pilsen area. That's what they tell me here in Chicago on South Laughlin, so check it out. You can... uh, Get familiar with the Alulu Brewery at alulubrew.com. That's A-L-U-L-U brew.com. And a very, very special thanks to our Patreon supporters who we are doing this show exclusively for tonight. You guys and gals really, really make this show happen. We cannot thank you enough. But of course, I'm not alone. I've got my Good friend and yours from Chicago. We're all from Chicago this week. Jimmy Mack. Hey! Jason Hayes, Star Wars fans. Thank you guys so much for coming out to the Pilsen neighborhood for Rebel Force Radio Live. Like Jason said, you guys are all part of a very special community to us. And uh, we're so happily, happy to give you guys exclusives like this and shows like RFR Rush Hour, if you guys are into that show, when I could get Jason, actually. Yeah, by the way, I I had a number of people come up to me throughout the last couple of days and talk to me about my habit of, you know, watching TV shows and movies while driving home (laughs) from work. Oh, yeah, we should mention that. And apparently a number of you are very alarmed by this. I'm telling you, I just listen. I really do just listen. Occasionally I glance. The traffic is terrible. When I get stuck... I watched a little bit, and then I'm, I'm driving on my way. You would not have had Clone Wars roundtables and Clone Wars Declassified if it wasn't for my abilities to drive and watch TV at the same time. So I hope you're all very thankful. But, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you guys are a Patreon audience, so I can be honest with you and ask you honest questions, right? You think Jason is only kind of half-consuming the content when he's struggling with the, com- the Cleveland commute? You know? I'm sitting here. I'm glued to my TV set. I'm like, yeah, play it again. Let's go. And I don't know. Jason's I, like, eh, you know, what's going on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not even paying attention. But yet somehow he's able to moderate the best damn conversations anyone can have in a roundtable situation. That's right. That's yeah. right. How does well, he do it? <laughs> he's seen it 500 times. Well, (laughs) the internet can be your friend. Yes, it can. It can. And also having great guests and great co hosts like Jimmy Mack, Billy Mack, Kyle Newman, Paul Bateman. Kyle Newman, Paul Bateman, FJ DeSanto, members of our A team cannot be here this weekend. So let's all just say thank you to those guys in particular for all the years, of course, they've brought incredible content to Rebel Force Radio and the Force Cast. How about a little thank you for Kyle Newman, Paul Bateman? Send some love to those guys because I know they're missing everybody. But you really do, you really do help make this show happen. Thank, thank you so much because honestly, if it wasn't for gatherings like this, you know, all this would be coming out of our own pockets and it would make our wives very grumpy. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, it's, it's events like this. We're able to 
provide this kind of content and do these events. Thanks to you, and yes. it's, none of the money is coming out of our pocket. The money goes directly to the show, so we can travel around and uh, you know take care of Billy Mac. Where's Billy Mac? We can take care of Billy Mac. <laughs> and um, no, truly, we really thank you. And um, about a, a couple of hours ago, we we got a really great special surprise that was sort of sprung on us. And we, 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 this was something we we didn't even ask because we know how busy uh, this individual is. And he's someone who means a, a great deal to all of us in Star Wars fandom. And I just want to say that I remember as a kid, I, I really kept the faith of Star Wars in the, uh, in the mid to late 80s when it wasn't as fashionable. And I would come home. I remember coming home from elementary school and still playing on my grandfather's workbench uh, with, uh, with all my action figures and just dreaming of the day that maybe someday, some way, George Lucas will make good on his promise of more Star Wars, new Star Wars. And I would go to my local mall, and I'd end up in the Walden book section, or in the, in this, in the, at the Walden bookstore, uh, in the, the sci-fi and TV movies uh, section. Lurking. Lurking. <laughs> Young Jason. As always. At the bookstore. And one day, and I'll never forget, coming across a brand new book. Lurking. Me at the time, a new book. With Darth Vader on the cover. Ooh. And it said, Star Wars, from, from concept to collectible. And at that moment, I knew that maybe Star Wars was really alive, and I wasn't the only one that felt this way. This was before the Internet. This was before we had this ability to communicate uh, as, a, as a community. And that book gave me the faith that maybe Star Wars was going to come back to us. And uh, the author of that book was a very, very special person, and he really is, in my opinion, the man who took fandom and made it a family. And we are so, so lucky to have him here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the head of Rancho Obi-Wan, the big cheese himself, Mr. Stephen Sansweet. Hi, Steve. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Star Wars celebration actually wouldn't be complete with us if we didn't have Steve Sansweet join us, as he has for every single Star Wars celebration we've ever been to. So, Steve, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and uh, welcome to the south side of Chicago, where Star Wars reigns supreme at least for this weekend. I see some Rancho Obi-Wan shirts in there. Yes. Yeah. Some good-looking shirts. Anyone here uh, been to Rancho Obi-Wan? Raise your hand if you've there been we to go. Rancho Obi-Wan. Now, not, raise, that's not now, now raise your hand if you want to go. To yes, Rancho there we go. That's, everyone wants to go, and I, I don't know what this you're waiting bucket for. bucket list stuff. Yeah, this, this really is, is. This is a trip every Star Wars fan should take to see the world's largest Star Wars collection of memorabilia. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, I'd say they're kind of qualified to make that call. And, uh, Steve, it's uh, just an incredible experience. Every time I go to Rancho Obi-Wan to just be completely immersed in the Star Wars universe, I don't think there's a place in the world that you can go to to have that sort of experience. Well, I think Disney is spending a couple hundred million dollars to try to replicate To that. try to catch... No, 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 no. Yeah, replicate. To catch up to you. That's what they're doing, in all honesty, to catch up to you. So um, I think you're still Mecca, truly, when it comes to Star Wars yes, fandom. Yes, yes. You are Mecca. There's no question about that. Um, but when you look back at the history of Star Wars Celebration, Steve, I mean, you were, you were one of the architects of this, this whole event and the concept of this event. Uh, how has it changed over the years? Someone told me that this is actually Celebration 13. It is. If we were still celebration numbering Celebration 13. Them. So the first one, the idea came about in the fall of 1998 after the first trailer was released for Episode 1, and there was such an outpouring. I mean, you remember that trailer, which oh, yeah. was just incredible. It only took me four and a half hours to download <laughs> back in 1998. You had that... The, Expensive dialogue. Yeah, that was that was high speed. I waited about two days. Yeah. So the idea my boss came up with was to have a fan fest, something for the fans 
let's give back to the fans. Um, and he had the idea of doing it in five different cities on the same weekend. Can you he be did. in five different cities he in did. the same weekend, he Steve? Didn't, he didn't quite understand the concept of a fan convention or San Diego Comic Con. He had never been to anything like that. So uh, I said, Jim, I think that's going to be a little bit difficult. So um, how about just one big convention? And he said, well, what about we do one in a city and then we'll travel it. We'll take it on the road. And so then every weekend for five weekends, we'll have a separate celebration. <laughs> Jim, All right. Jim couldn't conceive of the idea that people would actually fly in to one destination to attend a Star Wars convention. So, I mean, this was beyond his thought pattern. Well, at the same time, Dan Madsen, who then ran Star Wars Insider and the official fan club and the, the Star Wars shop, which soon became the Star Wars shop online, Remember the Jawa Trader? Yeah, that was Jawa, Jawa Trader. Trader. Right? It was the only yeah. place you could find Star Wars stuff. You know, <laughs> none of the stores were selling it. So, um, so I talked to Dan, and he said, "You know, we were thinking about having some sort of event too." I said, "Well, let's sort of put our resources together. You put up the money because, of course, Lucasfilm won't put up a cent." <laughs> and, I mean, that's just the way the company did things. Right. Other mm-hmm. people paid for it, and there's nothing. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that if you're, you know, you're a small company that with very few assets. Right. Only worth a few billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Little mom and pop shop. <laughs> but anyway, Dan was, Dan was willing. And so it was, it was Dan. It was me. It was Anthony Daniels, who was the first stage host. And John Bradley Snyder, who was editor of uh, Star Wars right. Insider. And we yes. came up with the concept... Now, we didn't know what to call it, so we came up with a list of about 50 names, and we almost named it the Star Wars Fan Fest, Yeah, which sounds a little... Fangoria? uh, Yeah, a little, little, I don't know, iffy. Star Wars Fan Fest coming to your town this weekend, and next weekend, Monster Truck, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. After the Fan Fest. I'm glad we didn't name it the Star Wars Fan Fest. (laughs) Yeah, right. I would have had fun with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you sure would have. <laughs> so one of the names on the list was Celebration, and somehow we, I mean, it was really tough. It seems obvious now, but it was really tough when we went through this list several times and eliminated names and eliminated names and finally came up with Celebration. And then I think it was John Snyder who said, that's perfect. It's musical. And I said, what do you mean it's musical? And he starts singing, it's the Star Wars celebration. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, and then we knew it happened. Please tell me you were rolling tape on Yes, it. right. <laughs> A Star Wars celebration. And we knew, we knew at that point, since yeah. it was indeed musical, uh-huh. that that had to be the name. <laughs> so uh, Star Wars celebration, uh, we, we actually planned... The programming in advance, we got the celebrities there. They had uh, pu- uh, publicity uh, obligations through their contracts. Mm-hmm. And publicity was willing to use that one of those obligations up to have fan event. And uh, we started planning things. My boss was dead set against anybody signing autographs for money. He couldn't believe that celebrities actually signed autographs and charged money for them. It was another alien concept. So the first celebration had no autograph celebrities. We didn't have an artist gallery until We got someone in the front row that's saying, yeah, yeah, that's right. Were you there? You were there. Yeah. Okay. No, no Star Wars cele- no autographs no. at Star Wars Celebration? A lot of rain. Yeah. A lot of rain, a lot of mud. Yeah, a lot of tents that leaked. Anthony Daniels saved that show. He was Anthony fantastic. was uh, was really pretty amazing. He uh, he went outside into yep. the rain in the long lines. We estimate we don't know because we had to c- uh, cut ticket sales on Saturday. Was, Denver got once in fifty year rains uh, that weekend. That's and, a Star Wars tradition. And we though, had, though. That happened in Tunisia, twice to Lucas. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Two different trilogies. We were intense because we, could, we were too late to get the Denver Convention Center. 
And so we got the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum in a, at a former Air Force base. And there were no other buildings that were usable except the Wings Over the Rockies Museum. And so we set up these giant tents. So we had two stages, the main stage, the behind-the-scenes stage, and then we had a third tent that was the dealer's tent, which got the worst rain and water in it. And um, But we almost didn't have celebration at all because 10 days before celebration, Columbine happened. Mm. Columbine was literally nine miles away from the site that we were having the Star Wars celebration. And I get into work one morning, and uh, my boss says, uh, come on in the office, Steve. And I go into the office, and there he's sitting there with the president of the company, one of the lawyers, and about four other executives. And he said, Steve, you realize what Columbine means? And I said, no. He said, we think we're going to have to cancel celebration. We can't have Ten celebration. Days. Ten days before. Um, and I'm sure the airlines will give people back their money for tickets. Oh, yeah. They're real flexible. Yeah, right, right. And the hotels will cancel the reservations at no charge. And I said, Jim, there's no way they're going to do that. We're going to have, a, we're gonna have a, black, a black eye if that happens. And so it, it, the talks went on for hours. The chat went on for hours. And, and then Dan, hearing that we might or, or were going to cancel Celebration, um, in, in his desperation and in his inspiration, got the mayor of the city of Denver to call our office. And he got on the phone, we put him on the speaker box, and he pleaded with us to go ahead with Celebration. He said, the city really needs it more than ever. So this was about three days after yeah. And it happened. The, it, the president of the company said, well, I'm still not convinced. And he left it to my boss, who was the head of marketing, to think about it overnight and make a decision. So the next morning, I'm, I'm there extra early, and I'm waiting for the boss to come in, and I hear him trudging up the steps. And uh, I look at him and say, well? And he, he's looking at me, and he sort of has a sorrowful look on his face. Because I think he thought maybe his job was on the line. And he had, he had talked to George about it, too. And he said, well, we're going ahead with it. Oh. <laughs> Thank goodness. He yes. Did. Thank God. So because had that first one not gotten off the ground, there wouldn't be would anything been, else. Right. The, yeah. yeah, because certainly if the first one had been canceled, there would be nothing. Celebration wouldn't exist. And there's been so many of them since then. And here we are in Chicago in 2019, uh, a full 20 years later. God, hard, hard to believe. And you did mention the whole autograph area that was non-existent at the first Star Wars celebration. Well, that started to an enormous industry these right. days. Well, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was pattern celebration after San Diego Comic-Con, which was the convention I was most used to. In San Diego, there are 40 different things you can do at any one time. All these panels, and you can be on the exhibitor floor and things like that. Well, I think you can have... go trout fishing during San yeah, Diego think... Comic-Con. <laughs> you can do everything. There. I have <laughs> gone trout fishing during San Diego Comic-Con. Cosplay yes. trout fishing (laughs) which reminds me that people always used to ask me what is the difference between star wars fans the main difference between star wars fans and star trek fans and i said oh well that's easy star trek fans dress up at shows star wars fans never do (laughs) (laughs) among other other things that have changed over the years yes yes so um so we went ahead with the, with the idea of doing as many different things as possible. But we ended up with maybe five different things that you could do at any one time. And one of them was the collector's track, which was on a flatbed truck outside <laughs> with a little... <laughs> we had no room. And people lined up to get into the museum because it had a roof that didn't leak. And, and they, they limited the attendance because there were jets there and other old planes as well as rockets and and then our displays, the licensees were in there and we had uh, props from episode one that people hadn't seen before. It was it was great. If it hadn't rained, it would have been perfect. But you know, we're Star Wars fans, so the sense of community was still there. 
despite the lousy weather, despite the fact that people were getting mud on their shoes, despite the fact that their so their coats were wet. Somebody just posted a photo today with me um, that I that was taken at celebration, and his coat is he has a blue coat, and you see the rain stain <laughs> almost all the way down to his belly button, and just it's like he was he was soaked. And he had a big smile on his face. Yeah. Loving every minute yeah. of him. Yeah. So. And, and at that point, you said, we should do this again. <laughs> well, we did. And, yeah. and we did. So yeah. it, it, was, it was successful from a standpoint of what makes Star Wars fandom successful, and that's the sense of community. Yes. And the, 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 the love and the passion that we all have for Star Wars. And whether we've entered Star Wars through the original trilogy or the prequels or the TV shows... Um, there's just this sense of unity, which there's a little disturbance in the force these days, but, uh, for the most part, it's still, uh, what binds the Star Wars fan community together. So we went from Star Wars one to uh, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars celebration one to Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah, Probably a lot of people in this room. Being a Chicagoan, it was certainly an easy uh, three-hour drive to get down there to well, get my I've Star a, Wars. I've met a lot of people on the floor in the last couple of days who've said, this is, this is my second or third celebration. I was in Indianapolis yes. and then Chicago because they're Midwesterners, and this is the easy commute for them. And so, um, you know, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm glad we're back in Chicago because... Yes. It's about time we went back to the center of the country. So yeah, that's right. Right on. Chicago, Chicago, Steve Sandsweet's favorite town. Oh. You promised me you, if I came, you wouldn't sing. <laughs> I have lots of Steve Sandsweet songs. Do you remember the first time I sang to you? Yes, I certainly do. <laughs> And I remember your son running away in horror. Yes, yes. He was so embarrassed by his old man singing. <laughs> at which convention was that? Oh, my gosh. That was, that, the, um, that was at least a dozen years yeah, ago no, at a, a dozen, Wizard World or Wizard maybe World. 15 yeah. years ago. I don't know. No, keep going back. <laughs> well, my, uh, Michael's only, you know, he's going to be 20 next month, so I, you can't go Michael, much further back from that. Michael was eight. I think. Okay, so about a dozen years yeah. ago. And yeah, about a dozen years ago. Yeah, boy, yeah. he hightailed it away from there. <laughs> he, was, he was all proud. He's like, for, Dad. For good reason. He, I, I, said, I said, Michael, come, you know, let's go. Because I love to share Star Wars with my children. I mean, my, my boys, it's just, that to me is the greatest thing about being a dad and a Star Wars fan is being in that position where I have the ability to pass it on. And I, yeah, a lot of you guys, right? Right? I mean, come on, yeah, right. Pass it forward. So yeah, yeah, pay it forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can have a room filled with Star Wars action figures too if you really put your mind to it. <laughs> See important little goals, you know, part of growing up, at least in my house. And so I've been able to share these moments with my kids. And so I said, we're going to go to this amazing place where there's all these, you'll see characters from comic books and movies and there'll be toys we can buy and I'm going to talk to this guy from Lucasfilm. He's, he works on Star Wars. That's his job and he's an iconic member in the Star Wars fan community and Michael's like, oh my god uh, I, this is going to be amazing. Can I be your photographer? And so I said, absolutely, you can be my phot- I think he even introduced himself to you as my photographer. <laughs> not, not my son. I'm Jimmy Max photographer. <laughs> And uh, and by the way, Michael did have this ability to score media credentials way you know easier than I could. So, but uh, so he he stood there with the camera and he was shooting us. And when I sang this song, Steve Sansweet, this is your life. When I sing this song to Steve, <laughs> oh, no. Michael uh, pretty much threw the camera up in the the air and ran around the corner. But it it went a little something like this. No. Glenn, Glenn, 
No, 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 no. I thought you were going to play the piano. <laughs> oh, he's got no piano. He doesn't have a piano. Oh, here we go. Sand sweet, Stephen J. Sand sweet. He wrote the Star Wars vault and the encyclopedia, too. <laughs> He lives at Rancho Obi-Wan, has a lot of Star Wars stuff in there with him, too. <laughs> He's a good dude. There it is. Steve Sansweet, ladies and gentlemen. Written by John Williams and Jimmy Mack. There you go. The classics. They love it. Unfortunately, the song went on for six minutes. <laughs> Oh, and, and there was the tap dance. Yeah. There was some tap dancing routine going on there, too. All but right. that's because security was upon us and asking us to leave. So we, we, we've talked a, lot about, we talked a lot about the past. Let's talk about the present and what's going on right now at Rancho Obi-Wan. Of course, you're not there, but you've brought a taste of Rancho Obi-Wan with you we, to Star Wars Celebration. We have yes. Destination location on that convention floor, friends. And I invite you all, if you haven't been there yet, to come to booth 5561 with the big orange banner over it. And we've brought... Uh, hmm? 5516. What did I say? 61. I don't think... 61, I think... Oh, is, the numbers were right? I think it's the ladies' room. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a very big ladies' room. <laughs> so if you go there... You're out of luck. <laughs> you don't need a booth number. There's a brilliant, huge banner that catches everyone's eye the second they hit that convention floor. It looks great. And what I love about it is it says, Steve Sense We Presents. That was Ann Newman's idea. Yes. Newman Ladies and gentlemen, right you know, Ann Newman is here with us tonight. And she said, don't put me on the microphone. I don't want to. But, I, you know, um, I, Ann Newman is really the mastermind behind Rad Show Obi-Wan. And it has only grown because of her passion, her commitment, and her dedication to providing Star Wars fans the ultimate location to visit the world's largest collection of Star Wars memorabilia. And I'm, I, I won't ask you to come on mic, but I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I'm going to ask everyone else to stand up and give Anne yeah. a huge ovation because she's yes, come on, Anne, there she is. Yes, and it, it, not only is she dedicated, but she is one of the coolest damn people that I have in my life, quite honestly. And her husband. Well, I'm going to say too, though, that that Anne was a fangirl before fangirl was cool and really was a trailblazer in this community. This so. is true. This is true. Oh, thank you. Are you oh, still? yeah, her husband's still here. Oh, yeah, that guy, Stu. Ladies and gentlemen, Stu! Stu! Minister of Stu! At Rebel Force yeah. Radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stu Levy, he's officially the Minister of Mood at Rancho Obi-Wan. And, he's uh, the debris master. Yeah, well, yeah, he does. He does clean up a lot of messes. Let me just. Say. And and Stu is the guy uh, who uh, is uh, Anne's uh, better half, or maybe it's the other way around. I can't figure it out. You guys are you guys are a, it's a, a Jedi Padawan relationship, and um, I, I think they can go either way sometimes because they're they're the the coolest couple that I know. So and together they provide a backbone to Rancho Obi Wan. And um, it's, it's because of all their hard work and, of course, uh, passion and, and Steve Sansweet here and, uh, and, and all the volunteers and all of the people who contribute to Rancho Obi-Wan that make it possible. So go to RanchoObiWan.org, learn more about, uh, in my opinion, the greatest destination for Star Wars fans. Uh, learn how you could support Rancho Obi-Wan and keep the museum alive and thriving for Years and generations to come. So, um, I mean, it, it's the only place where you can see and experience Star Wars on a level that is 
as profound, I think, as possible. And so, I, I, I mean, every time I go there, it's a new experience for me. So thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Stu. Uh, Bob, back at home. And uh, all Watching the volunteers. The <laughs> Rancho Obi-Wan is in a former chicken barn. There were 20,000 chickens in what is now Rancho Obi-Wan until the early 1970s. And they are force ghosts that po- populate the museum. <laughs> I've seen many force ghost chickens at Rancho Obi-Wan. Maybe it's just the late nights with Stu that provide that kind of visual yes, for me. And, but. Uh, um, <laughs> The medication that you take when you... <laughs> well, you know, you have to connect with the force in different ways. Different ways. <laughs> different ways. I think and, that's why Yoda talks backwards. <laughs> <laughs> to me, he talks forward, so I don't know what you're talking about. But, uh, but so, our, so we were talking yeah, about our booth. The booth. The booth, the booth here yes. at, at, uh, at uh, Star Wars Celebration Chicago. So we decided to do three different things. Number one... We wanted to do, at Mary Franklin's request, Mary was my assistant at Lucasfilm, and then she went to Reed Pop, and she's now left Reed Pop, and she's at a company called Crunchyroll, which does anime. I thought they were Um, sushi. Sushi. Are you kidding me? Anime? I thought they were sushi. And anyway, so we, we were asked to do 20 years of celebration, so we have a big display and we went through hundreds of pieces of Celebration artwork that had been done since Celebration 3 and picked about 16 or 18 pieces that we framed and we have up as an example of the kind of art that has been sold at Celebration over the years. And then two cases and a lot more of Celebration memorabilia from Celebration 1 through Celebration 12, which don't say I said Celebration 12. They don't like numbers anymore. So. <laughs> How do you keep track? I, we don't. We had a cheat sheet in the office. <laughs> I, we kept saying, which number is this? Well, it's which hard. Which follows what? Because it's like... Which Orlando was oh, this? Yeah, Orlando, 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 Anaheim. Orlando, Orlando, Orlando. <laughs> After Chicago. Celebration 6, well, it was actually before Celebration 6, because when we went to London, it was Celebration Europe the first time. That's right. That, and that, that was is 2007. Right. And then 2008 was Japan. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to Europe twice, to Germany and uh, then London again. But we are at, you know, this, this is the big secret that we've revealed. This is Celebration 13, as 13. you have said. So, um, Chicago making 13 a lucky number. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I hope. Absolutely. Knock on wood. Ozzy Guillen was number 13 on the Chicago White Sox. We're here on the south side. And always. Uh, so that's one part of, that's one, on. that's one part of the booth. Uh Um, The next part of the booth is female fandom, and a lot of people think that women have come to Star Wars just fairly recently. And as you, you what does Ann Newman think of that? (laughs) You know, you're not exactly a rookie, are you? You're not a noob. No, I mean, she and her sister were playing with Star Wars trading cards and action figures back in the day, and so we have a lot of stuff from the '70s and '80s showing that. Star Wars was appealing to female fans even back then. And then the third part of the exhibit is a display of 45 helmets of the saga that we've taken out of the collection. And it's just in a a display that really is visually striking. Oh, my God. Very pleased with the way it turned out. Yeah, I've never seen Steve's collection of helmets quite displayed this way. Usually when you go to the museum, the helmets are... They're All scattered. around. Yeah, scattered in the art room. And here you see them sort of like, I called it the team photo. So they're all in one place, and you can get a snapshot of all of this amazing artwork done to traditional Star Wars helmets like Stormtrooper helmets, Darth Vader helmets, Boba Fett helmets. And it's just one of the most incredible displays that I've ever seen you guys produce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, we had fun putting it together. Didn't we, Ann? <laughs> yes. And said, "Yes, we did." <laughs> so, uh, so that makes up. And we've had we've had crowds from from the first day through today. It's been great. Met a lot of people. We met a lot of people, which is what celebration is all about. It's meeting people that you met uh, maybe two celebrations ago, or you meet every celebration. Um, people coming in from Germany and England and Japan and. Um, 
you know, it's uh, it's very exciting to to reconnect with uh, with fans who uh, have you know. Here's a copy of a picture I took with you back right. uh, eight years ago. Would you sign it, please? <laughs> My favorite is the kid you met at a show five years ago, and he cosplays as like Shorty Robe Luke or Lando, <laughs> that's been Lando, and then. Every year, he cosplays as the same character. And you gradually see that character grow up to be an adult. And that, to me, is the funniest thing. It's like, wait, that mustache isn't fake anymore? (laughs) Wow! The scariest thing is when he brings his son or daughter. (laughs) Oh, yeah, right, right. That's that's a phenomenon I've noticed, starting with uh, Celebration London in 2007. All of a sudden... There were all of these families there, and that was something that I hadn't been used to. It was, you know, the men, the women, but they were older. They were adults. They were people at least in their 20s, some teenagers, but then it was family time, and that's Mm -hmm. continued through every celebration since then, and, you know, now we have babies at celebration, sometimes in strollers that I would kill to have in the collection. <laughs> we, we were X-Wing strollers. And we were oh, actually... Doesn't we, that little kid look comfortable in that thing? We, got a, we had a little <laughs> VIP uh, behind-the-scenes tour last night of the Droid Builders room. And one of the Droid Builders told us that uh, they had constructed an R2 droid that essentially worked as a cradle. And they had blankets and pillows so that they could enjoy celebration and put their newborn inside the R2 unit <laughs> and push it around with the remote control. I thought that was quite brilliant, actually. Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> I think Kenny Baker would have loved that. <laughs> so for folks that are um, thinking about, okay, I think I want to do this. Uh, you know, Maybe they have a big event, an anniversary, a big birthday coming up, something, because... We hear a lot that a visit to Rancho Obi-Wan is on the bucket list. What is the best way, Steve, to sort of get the ball rolling, plan the trip? How do they, how do they get the... Uh... Well, the best way is to go online to RanchoObiWan.org, and we have a full explanation of how you become a member of Rancho Obi-Wan and support us. And number two, how you do a tour. The tours are mainly on Saturday mornings, and they last uh, three-plus hours usually. And they're guided tours. Um, sometimes I do them. More often, docents do them. And they follow what I've been saying. And mm-hmm. some of the funny stories behind the scenes, some of the tragic stories of things that got away. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. we all have those. Yeah, we all you have those. have those. I have those. I remember the most tragic one of all. Which was? The 3PO tape dispenser. No, no. no. <laughs> It's tragic in itself. <laughs> There's a little scotch tape eating between your legs. I mean, come on. That's a, that's a Saturday night for Anthony Daniels. And... I'm not touching that line with a you-know-what. No, that's all right. Leave me out here in the desert to fry. All right, go on, Steve. Uh... The, the big one that got away. The big one that got away was a portrait of Chewbacca that looked very unique from a distance. And I thought, hmm. And they, this guy also had a portrait of E.T. at the time. It was the 80s. And I got closer to him, and I looked at it and said, that's really interesting. How, how did you make that? And he said, oh, well, my friend's a barber, and I just we sort of sweep up the barbershop floor, and then I... Paste the hair on. (laughs) My stomach literally turned and I turned around and walked away. Well, now I realize that that was probably the tackiest Star Wars thing I have ever seen in my entire life and I let it get away. It's like like the Star Wars equivalent of the Velvet Elvis. The, the hairy Chewbacca. Oh, I don't know. Hairy hair. <laughs> Maybe we have some listeners out there who own a beauty shop or a <laughs> barber shop, and uh, they might get inspired by hearing this story and say, you know, there's a void I could fill in Stephen J. Sansweet's life and make a contribution to Rancho Obi-Wan on an artistic level, and maybe they'll think twice after they sweep up the floor in their... <laughs> 
in their uh, beauty salon establishment. And but as I was saying, you can go online to RanchoObiWan.org. <laughs> yes. we, we seem you to see what I deal is, with every is, week, Steve. Every week, is, I'm trying to help here. What the? Is it the beer or or what? It's probably the beer. Yeah. It's probably the beer. It's probably it's the genetics. It's the genetics. It's partly that, in maybe five days, six days, however long we've been going here. It's just... <laughs> You just get lost in the void sometimes, you know? RanchoObiWan.org. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Steve, and uh, thank you for everything you do for fandom and for everyone who's listening. I mean, you should head out to Rancho Obi-Wan. Make, make that your Star Wars destination of 2019, 2020. Uh, I, I, I can't think of any better way to... As long as we're talking about Star Wars celebration, to celebrate Star Wars, than to yeah. visit Rancho Obi Wan. Rancho Obi Wan dot org. It's very easy to you know sort of you have the high of Star Wars celebration, and then you have the low after celebration. You realize it might be another year or two, and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do to pass the time between movies, Star Wars celebrations? Go to Rancho Obi Wan. It's always there. You got to check it out. And uh, as Jim said, we owe a huge. Debt to you, Steve, because you yes. really have been um, the probably the greatest ambassador of Star Wars fandom uh, ever. Truly, I don't think there's anybody that's done more. How about another round for Steve for dropping by tonight? And we love him here at Rebel Force Radio. So uh, those of you who follow us on social media, you may have seen a recent photo that we published. And um, it really was galaxies colliding. It was... <laughs> it was the king of cool meeting... I don't know, the Prince of Felt. (laughs) (laughs) Prince of Felt. The Prince of Felt, that's pretty good, right? I don't know. Um, So, a couple of weeks ago, I'm going about my business, and I get this text from Jimmy Mack, and it's 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 a screen capture of a confirmation of a receipt that he had that he had bought a, a, a photo meet and greet. I'm like, why? You know, I mean, why is Jimmy buying a photo meet and greet? I mean, we've, we've had a, a, a great run uh, doing our podcast. We've met a lot of incredible people, had a lot of incredible interviews. And um, it was a confirmation that said for three, for a meet and greet with Billy D. Williams. And the text said, oh, yeah, we're doing this. And he wrote, all four of us. Four of us? Four of us? Look, it says it's for three. Well, all right, so children under two don't need accompanied by, or need accompanied by a uh, guardian or parent, but apparently Muppets don't need accompanied by anybody because they got in for free. And um, so we got this incredible... Incredible opera. I'm actually glad that Jim's not here because we're going to tell the real story. <laughs> Come on. Billy Mac. <laughs> we're going to tell the real story what happened. This is great. So, Yikes. I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> Jimmy and I are kind of, we're sort of like the odd couple. We're Oscar and Felix. Oh, he's here. Oh, no. <laughs> We were going to we tell the real. We're still going to tell the real story about when galaxies collided earlier today in the autograph hall. Fireworks. We're already telling that story. <laughs> we I are, thought the we picture are. would tell the story for at least no the picture a few hours. Oh, the, no, the, the, the picture does, only tells part of the story. All right, all right, okay. You guys just go ahead and do what you have to do. <laughs> have they to have do their it. account have of what happened, it. and I have mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you'll probably find a consistency in the two. So, all right. Well, you know, I mean, I remember the days, and I look. I, this is not about complaining or oh, what was us or anything, but there was a time when, when the autograph hall ran really, really well. Uh, and uh, anybody done the autograph hall recently? And maybe we're you know today's Saturday. It's the biggest day of the convention. I get it. But you know they have all this technology, and you've got a you've got a QR code, and you've got a specific time, and be there at three be there at three fifteen for your three thirty appointment with your celebrity of choice. In our case, it's the great Billy D. Williams, Lando Calrissian, and cast member of Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> He's back, man. So when Jimmy sent the text and said all four of us, I knew immediately, okay, well, there's Jim, there's me, there's Bill. The four. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Puppet Lando. <laughs> so they said, all right, be there in line at 315 uh, for your 330 uh, meet and greet with Billy D. So by 415... I started to realize that maybe things <laughs> weren't running as smoothly in the autograph hall as they did back in the day of official picks. But nonetheless, we sat there we, we, on the floor waiting for our big moment. We didn't really know what to expect. Um, I mean, Billy D is not a stranger to Rebel Force Radio or our other podcast adventures. Jim, you have had the opportunity to interview... Billy, in fact, one of my favorite m- memories or stories is that you got a hug from Billy D, oh. right there on the on the on the sidewalk, wow. outside of the radio station. That right? was an amazing moment, actually. Yeah. Um, he uh, had spent some time at a CBS radio station that I was employed at. Uh, he was there to be interviewed by a few shows, and whenever I found the opportunity to provide Star Wars content to the, I mean, you know, people hate when you say true fan or real fan. But let's face it, we are the most hardcore. If you guys are going to be yes. listening to Star Wars podcasts every week, I think I know my core audience. <laughs> All right? So I would always then sweet talk the publicist. Hey, you know, a few minutes here for the real fans. And a lot of times they would go for it. Guys like Frank Oz, Anthony Daniels, and then one day Billy D came in. And I uh, was thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to him for a little while. And the conversation then continued after the interview. He was hanging out. He's in no rush. He's chill. He's Billy D. Williams. Well, I, I think you described to me walking through uh, Grant Park hand in hand with the guy. All right, well, hold on. I mean, it went really, it went oh, really well. Wait a minute, what? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> That's You're holding hands, running through the daisies. <laughs> That's he a was false all story. Kinds of deep That's stories. That's a right? totally false story. <laughs> it was Millennium Park, <laughs> not Grant Park. Sorry, but uh, no. Close I mean, enough. Billy D was very generous with his time, and he hung out and took pictures with people and everything. And he wanted to see the sculptures and the artwork that adorn Millennium Park. And Millennium Park was. Fairly new at that time. It was only a couple of years old, so Billy D, being the artist he is, wanted to go out and check out what it was all about. But he didn't know which way to go. This is where I saw opportunity. <laughs> I'm going to be Billy D. Williams' tour guide for a few minutes, okay? So I walked him out of, uh, we were at the Prudential Plaza, and I walked him out the building, and I uh, took him across. Uh, uh, was that Randolph? And uh, we were at Millennium, and I just sort of pointed out, well, you know, they have the sculpture garden over there, and there's a little trail over there. And um, he looked at me like, well, it's time to part ways. He kind of gave that body <laughs> language like this. <laughs> we're, we're, he done, came we're done in, here. We're done here. He came in, but remember he, that moment. He kind of went like this. No, no, but it was like this. <laughs> like, like, no, it was like a thank you oh, for okay. bringing me out here. And, and and he came in for the embrace. And I went for it. <laughs> I went for it. <laughs> Who could resist? Who so, among us could resist? So um, he tried to pull away, and I was <laughs> holding on to him. No. But I, awkward. <laughs> the hug naturally came to an end. And Billy That was D, natural? Wait a minute. That was a natural end? Billy D. <laughs> After the hug, because it was warm out that day, he, he said, 
Excuse me if I'm perspiring. <laughs> I swear to God. And I said, I said, is that even part no, no, of your, la- no. your language, your vocabulary? Hold on, hold Wait, on. Why are you holding me on when I'm, it's not like, because point. Because the line, what did he say to you? Excuse me if I was perspiring. Right, can we have the real voice of Billy <laughs> Dean? <laughs> I thought there would be a yeah, family yeah. resemblance because uh, I am related to Billy D. Oh, Puppet Billy. Puppet <laughs> Billy, we should start calling him. Okay. That'll catch on minute, during Thanksgiving. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Tease. Wait a minute. Tease. Wait, hold on, wait. I think we need to reenact this. Can we reenact the. All right. All right. Let's do a dramatic reenactment of the hug that took place outside of Millennial Park. Do you want me to you hug? Did you bring it with you? Yeah, you, you? You got it. Where is it? Here we go. Here we go. Here's what it looked like. Uh, puppet Lando, come on over here. Oh, oh, where is it? Without the puppet. No puppet. Oh, no puppet. No, no. I know. All right, here we go. So here it is. So I'm with Billy D. The real Billy D, <laughs> this guy, and I said, I said, <laughs> I said, Millennium Millennium Park is right across the street, Billy D, and then he looked at me and went, like, thank you, and came in for an embrace. <laughs> they hug, and then he said, Well, you gotta excuse me if I'm perspiring. <laughs> And I said, your Billy T. Mother Williams is perspiring in a part of your language. <laughs> and I took that little drop of Billy D. Sweat, that single drop, and I put it in a test tube, and it's in my Star Wars collection to this day. I will be taking bids on eBay after the show. Thank you. Well, fast forward a few years later, we come to today. And there are there are, are certain things. Whenever we're, we're we're gearing up for a celebration, there's certain things that give Jimmy Mack anxiety. I never really know what they are. By the way, they're never these shows. Though that's my anxiety. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. You know, it's all kinds of news. Just talk about the news. But there are certain things. <laughs> It's only Star Wars celebration. If you can't think of something to talk to other Star Wars fans right. about on this weekend, then what are we doing here, man? But this, but this photo op that thousands of people do all the time at these conventions. We never do I mean, one. this was rocket science. There was precision. We needed to be at this point, at this place, all that. Everything was just locked and loaded. And one of the few times that Jim was like, on time was with this meet and greet. We had to be there. Billy D. Williams, come on. We had to be there. You don't leave him waiting. (laughs) Where are all those Rebel Force guys? (laughs) (laughs) They said they'd be here at 3.30. (laughs) 3.34. So our appointment time was at 3.30, and like I said, by 4.15, I realized, wow, you know, they're really on the ball here at at, at Tops. Um, So it was the three of us and a duffel bag, and inside the duffel bag <laughs> was our fourth guest. <laughs> and, 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 I got, and I got Bill. He's like, he's like, what do you think I should do? I mean, should, should I walk in with it? Should I, <laughs> should I pull it out? I'm like, no, you can't walk in with a with a duffel bag and start pulling stuff out. They're gonna, you know, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work. So I'm like, while we're walking in, maybe slip it onto your hand. <laughs> so we go in, and Billy D. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know if he was the real Billy D because he wasn't moving at all. He's just sitting there, just like a statue. <laughs> and I'm like, is that alive? Is that really Billy D? Because it could have been like a Madame Tussauds kind of thing. And they're like, let's go, let's go, come on, come on. And they're yelling at us. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to stand in front of him, kind of crouch and be like... <laughs> 
I have no idea what's going on behind me. <laughs> well, we walked past. We walked, I mean, it was so hectic. We walked past the thing. I think that, you know, we're like, Billy G's in there. And it's, you know, Julian oh. Glover or somebody was sitting there. <laughs> it was hey, crazy. Are you guys? Yeah, we almost it ended up crazy. with Hayden Christensen. I don't know. It's, and, oh, that's Billy D. So we go in, and, and, and I just kind of crouch. I sort of smile, and, uh, and, and, and I'm just hoping that everything's working out with the two Mac brothers. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I don't know what's going on, but the photographer... <laughs> but, but Jim doesn't really like where Puppet Lando is. <laughs> Puppet Lando is like on the outside of Billy D. He wanted him like on top of Billy D. Of course, he didn't. I thought he didn't explain any of this to us. I thought it'd be me, Puppet Lando, and Billy Matt. And then well, you didn't share these thoughts. And then <laughs> Billy D. Billy, well, it's just common sense. When you take a picture with Billy D. This way, so the puppet. Listen, it's common sense. <laughs> when you got the puppet, you want to get the puppet in the closest proximity no, to the no, real Lando as no, possible. He, he's, he's screaming at me, put it by his head, put it by his head. You know, I mean, the, the, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like standing there. He's like, you know, Billy, <laughs> yeah, you know, use, use the hand, put the finger in the ear, do the... I'm like, I don't even want to talk, get anywhere. You know, Billy D's sitting there. He's got like this whole aura around him, you know? And I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not putting the puppet in the guy, you know, near the, anywhere near the guy's head. You know, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, someone that's also so waiting funny. to be the next person to get their picture taken with Billy D yes. recognizes J- uh, Jimmy Mack. I'm like, Jimmy! <laughs> 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 Jimmy Mac! Wait the moment. He starts yelling at Billy. He's like, get it by his head! Get it by his head! It's, it's Billy D. I'm like, at this point, we don't even know if Billy D is awake. He might just have, like, eyeballs painted on his eyelids. The photographer. Yeah. And all Everybody stand still! The photographer's yelling. Somebody's yelling, Jimmy Mac, Jimmy Mac! I'm yelling, get the puppy by his head! And then finally, Billy D. Williams had had enough. He had had enough. Oh, man. Both arms. Billy D. all of a sudden springs to life. Bam! Both arms come up. You go, everybody pull it! <laughs> He just throws his arms up. He, like, hits me in the chest when he does it. Judo right. chop to Billy, to Jimmy Mack. And that's when we knew the puppet show was over. <laughs> but somehow we all managed to stand there and you act like the adults photo. and get our damn Honest picture taken. <laughs> Hand to God, this is the truth of how it went no. down. I didn't know what the photo was going to look like. <laughs> Billy D. smacked <laughs> It's like they had some like he had a look plastered on his face. I mean, you know, he was he was like he was like everybody been cool, yeah. bunch of jerks. Like, still got the grin plastered on his face. I don't, you know, and, and, and we look, we leave there. And my my heart is like pounding. I mean, they nearly sick the sick the uh, uh, you security. Know, well, yeah, the the secret the celebration equivalent of the best uh, secret guards. service times. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and Jim's standing there with the photo going, I still don't like where that puppet is. <laughs> Dude, it, goes, it needs to go over his head. You know? so I think I, Paul Bateman might be able to Photoshop yeah, that over top. I did send the picture to Paul, so we will be seeing the photo with Puppet Lando over. Special edition. Lando. The- that will be the special edition. <laughs> oh, it's so much funnier. So I know everyone's like, oh, Lando met Lando. Did they have a moment? Yeah, Billy D. No had moment. no idea there was a puppet behind him <laughs> No, he at didn't. All. He didn't ever they see They really the didn't puppet. meet one another, unfortunately. We, I mean, at some point, hopefully. We were, we were lucky uh, puppet Lando didn't get judo chopped. <laughs> <laughs> we thought there was the possibility he'd freak out and, like, rip it up in front of us and stuff. <laughs> That didn't happen. No, yeah, no. He didn't turn his, his head at all, though. He just but, like, cool it! 
<laughs> I'll never forget that moment. And it, it, like everyone, everything. it was amazing though. The, the the way that he just kind of flips on the air conditioning and the whole room cools off. Yeah. Everyone just and stood there straight and just like. <laughs> and, the, and the proof is in the photo. There's all this chaos, and yet we're like <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Billy D. Oh my gosh. I wish I was lying about this. I really wish this was. This is absolute truth. It, and I'm doubled over laughing. <laughs> I can't believe we did not get kicked out of the whole thing. Billy oh. D's probably like, well, I only had to punch one person today. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was pretty awesome. I mean, so go on our Instagram or Facebook. I don't know if we got on Twitter. Are we on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, we're somewhere. Yeah, we're some, yeah. RFR Rebel Force, yeah, on Twitter. I mean, we're on Twitter. There's a lot of people saying they're Rebel Force Radio on Twitter, but <laughs> we're on Twitter, too. So. Yeah, real Rebel Force, yeah, RFR Rebel Force. Um, but it was, a, it was a great, great, great opportunity to see Billy D, and he looked so cool. And how amazing was it to see him behind uh, the controls of the Millennium Falcon again in that laugh? So great. He was laughing, yes, but um, you know something has become a bit of a of a tradition with with uh, Puppet Lando here on Rebel Force Radio, is that there's no one better to tell you about the delicious food and drinks that are available at various locations. He's read the drink menu for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but tonight, who can tonight, forget the menu from Denny's? Oh, the Denny's oh, yeah. for Solo. Available on YouTube. That's where I kicked it all off. <laughs> um, but tonight, here at Alulu's, we also have a, an incredible Star Wars-themed menu. So if, if we could... could Wait, hold on. Let me, I, let me see if he's around. Should I just say I really don't know how I got into this? <laughs> I, I got myself into this. <laughs> I know how it happened. Yeah, cra- just cracking up swank at the last celebration. And nothing and suddenly motivates me more hand. than cracking up Jason Swank. I mean, I live for that. And I found his kryptonite. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> What's that, Puppet Lando? <laughs> you want to come out and say hi to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> this is my own Puppet Lando. <laughs> I can't let him man. have all the fun, you know. This is a brother rivalry here, you know. Oh, I know yeah, you man. like me the best. But <laughs> Okay, but well, we'll let um, somebody stick his hand up your ass and entertain the people. This was really good. All right. All right, here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. <laughs> yeah. It, all right. Yeah, this what is are you what, doing? This is what you want. You're, all right? killing, you're, you're killing the you're killing the magic. All right, I give you. I give you. Puppet Lando. Please. All right. Boy, he's cold. He's been on the window, so he's gotta <laughs> I gotta warm him up a little bit. All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. Do we need to mic him? Does he need a I, mic? He, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Oh. <laughs> I forget. I, I tend to get too technical about. Talk about ruining the magic. <laughs> no, no, I think that. All right, Ed said the magic. <laughs> Me. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? <laughs> I'm Lando Calrissian, galactic entrepreneur. <laughs> All right, so we have a, an incredible menu of Star Wars themed foods. Uh, are you are you guys still hanging out with these losers? <laughs> <laughs> we have this. Here we are at a Lulu Brewery and Pub. Well, you We've got that. a menu here. If we, if we could, Billy, if if the folks out there are still, uh, uh, if their bellies are growling and they haven't had anything, they might want to try something from this incredible menu. Okay, well, this, you know, you got to make sure you're engaging those Star Destroyers at point blank range. I <laughs> just do a lot better than you will against that Death Star. <laughs> but actually, I'm talking about the Death Star Burger. <laughs> I 
it's a real system destroyer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, the ghost peppers on that thing can easily blow up all the ram. <laughs> Double patty, aged cheddar, <laughs> pork belly, egg ghost pepper jam, <laughs> and pickled onions. <laughs> <laughs> and might I entice your taste buds with an Ewok feast barbecue pork? <laughs> now, C3PO saved Han and Luke from the Ewok's bellies. <laughs> but they couldn't save the pig. <laughs> yeah, you know, those, those Ewoks, uh, they, they look nice and sweet, but, you know, they, <laughs> they, they wanted to put a hand and, uh, and Luke on the spit there for that, that evening's feast. I mean, you guys think about that for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> so you might want well, you might want to go with this alternative, uh, uh, sweet and spicy cured pork uh, skewers with, <laughs> with a spiced vinegar sauce straight from the sanctuary moon. That sounds good, Puppet Land. <laughs> hey, Puppet Land. Hey, thanks, Jimmy Mac. You're looking pretty good yourself, oh, you know. Thank you, thank you. I'm so happy you were able to come out with us tonight to a Lulu on the south side. And- I mean, the South Side seems like your kind of your kind of place. You know? Yeah, I like the South Side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you pay for being successful. <laughs> <laughs> Have we gotten to the uh, like, what? okay? We, I thought we were at the Colt 45 part. Yeah, we got f- uh, maybe maybe puppet because that works every read time. It so well, here I'll, just, I'll hold it for him right here, and maybe oh <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amperu's fennel stew. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they got the recipe for this. Amperu's secret. It's a secret recipe enjoyed by many generations of Skywalker. <laughs> Lord Vader set a trap for him. Moving on. Oh, we got a, we got a, a what, what else we got here? We got a, a poly starch bread with bantha butter. <laughs> it weighs quarter portion. <laughs> it's a scavenger's favorite on Jakku. Or in Tatooine. Uh, enjoyed best after a hard day of forced labor. And you know, I mean, after I've been in the carbon freeze chamber... Uh, you know, around all those ug knots. <laughs> uh, sometimes the bantha butter just really, really relaxes me. <laughs> no, it really does. I, 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 I absolutely recommend it. Oh, God. No, oh, don't get any funny ideas now. Eh? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. And last but not least, <laughs> last but not least, old, oh, this goes, <laughs> I've got a little combo here for you. Um, we got the Wookiee cookies, <laughs> uh, che- Chewbacca uh, smashed, smashed up some cinnamon, chocolate, and vanilla. Well, that's all it says. So I guess he uh, he whipped out all that up and put it in the Wookiee uh, oven, and you can, you can uh, wash all that down with a nice blue milk. Uh, but it's been spiked by Greedo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not just a docile bounty hunter. He's uh, apparently uh, putting a little. Uh, <laughs> he's got he's got a flask, you know, in that back pocket. <laughs> And it's, it's too bad, he, you know, he couldn't have uh, offered Han a little bit of that. It might have been ended up a little bit better for him back at uh, Moss Eisley. But uh, anyway, uh, you got uh, gin, coconut cream, blue. <laughs> well, you got blue in there, whatever it is. And uh, 
looks like your cape. Oh, they whip this up for me in the kitchen over at, uh, at Besman's sometimes. <laughs> One of Lando's favorites. Uh, <laughs> vanilla or guillet. <laughs> oh, you got to be smooth to say those type of words. <laughs> All topped off with a little bit of pineapple and lime. So, so hey, be sure you get some libations. And, uh, you know, if you see Lobot around... Uh, um, He's got a he's got a button on the back. Just just give that a little. I haven't been able to get in touch with him lately, so I think he's. I actually think he might have blocked me. We had a little. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh Puppet Lando. Oh my God! Oh my God. Billy Mac. <laughs> and there oh he goes. Oh, it's been, a, it's been a busy trip for that guy. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, let's hit it. How about a little bit of news, all right? <laughs> all right. Any news lately? Anybody heard anything good? Nothing. No, nothing major happening in the world of Star Wars. How about this? How George Lucas helped J.J. Abrams with the script for Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Huh? huh? Was it his idea to bring back Emperor Palpatine? I don't know. According to uh, IndieWire, George Lucas' involvement with the Star Wars didn't end when he sold the multi-billion dollar franchise to Disney in 2012. The big uh, a debut of the trailer for the highly anticipated Rise of Skywalker, the third and final installment in the new trilogy of the sequels, began. They began with The Force Awakens. J.J. Abrams has revealed the extent of Lucas's involvement as a consultant on the new film script. He said the movie had a very, very specific challenge, which had to take eight films and give an ending to three trilogies. And so we had to look at what is the bigger story. We had conversations amongst ourselves. We met with George Lucas. How about a hand? They met finally with George Lucas. No brainer. Wasn't this guy supposed to be the consultant for all of the I remember those the it was him and Kathleen Kennedy there at the little table on the YouTube video. Oh, I'm gonna be the consultant. <laughs> <laughs> So lucky to have George, the consultant. <laughs> so uh, they're they're making good on that. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I know. I, know. I care for her. I, I know. She's listening. So JJ um, said the movie had a very very specific challenge, which is to take eight films, give an ending to the three trilogies. So we had to look at what is the bigger story, and we had conversations amongst ourselves. We met with George Lucas before we started writing the script. So um, he says, these things that were uh, in real, not debate, but looking at the sort of vastness of the story and trying to figure out what is the way to conclude all this. But it has to do with its, uh, it, but it also has to work on its own as a movie. It has to be its own thing. It has to be surprising and funny. Blah, blah, blah. JJ, uh, uh, uh. You can't assume anyone has sat and watched eight movies before this one. Yeah, we get it. But the fact is that it sounds like this idea that Palpatine was going to come back into the sequel trilogy originates with George Lucas's original treatments. And Jim, I heard you say earlier to somebody on the convention floor that you felt all along that this was going to have to come back and rest on Palpatine's doorstep. Yeah, I think it's obvious. I, Star Wars Episode One is titled The Phantom Menace. Who is the Phantom Menace? Well, it's Palpatine himself. Everything he did, everything he orchestrated, everything he manipulated... All the strings he pulled set the events in motion that we see for the rest of the entire saga. And while he is not the main focus of the saga, it is his machinations that led to the Skywalkers rising in prominence in this galaxy far, far away. So it only makes sense that somehow he comes back into play for this final episode. I've missed his presence in 7 and 8. Now... I've always said you cannot reject or accept either seven or eight without seeing episode nine because that will put the entire story into focus. 
So we've been dealing with 66% of the story right now, and I think a lot of people have been a little bit harshly opinionated about an incomplete picture. So when it all comes together, I think we'll be able to sum up all the parts as a whole. And to me, if you're dealing with a nine-part saga, it only makes sense to bookend it with the Phantom Menace at the beginning and the return of that same presence at the end to provide that antagonist um, that if I might just, just disagree for a little bit, I think what J.J. Abrams is, did is he stuck a big stick of dynamite in episode 8 and just pulled the plunger and just blew the thing up well. out, of, uh, out of canon in the sense that what, what Ryan did was took every interesting plot thread that J.J. Abrams developed for episode 7 and he just kind of snipped them all off and it made them a big nothing. And uh, one of, I think, the things that's real obvious about it is in Episode 7, you see the downed Star Destroyer. You see the toppled-over AT-AT that Ray is, uh, is uh, scavenging in. And what's one of the big images of this trailer? It's the, the Death Star, wreckage of the Death Star that has landed on whatever planet they are. We could assume it's Endor or one of the other moons uh, in the system. And I think that that's what J.J. did. I, I think he has uh, had to deal with Episode Eight as a consequence, but at the same time, I think that Episode Nine is really a sequel to Episode Seven, and Episode Eight, unfortunately, is a little bit of collateral damage to this ridiculous relay race mentality that they had in developing the sequel trilogy. So what do you make, then, of the reveal that arrows were pointing into a direction the Palpatine direction for a long time now. They seem to say that that has been part of the foundation for this story. Uh, Kevin Lyle, who's sitting right here, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Lyle from Norse Legion. Kevin reminded me last night over uh, some libations and a cigar that he recalls seeing in the Art of Episode 7 book references to a return of Palpatine. Is that right, Kevin? Uh, yeah, the episode uh, episode seven art book has uh, the scuba divers going under a st- under the into an ocean in Endor, where they went to the Emperor's throne room to retrieve some quarter some sort of MacGuffin that wasn't decided upon, uh-huh. and and that became that was going to be that was an original Lucas idea, as was the Jedi Temple, to uh, that um, that never came through. But maybe we're going to see it now, as we saw the, the it looked like Death Star too in some ocean on some planet that does have foliage, so it, it could have been Endor. Very well, could have been Endor. But uh, what Kathleen Kennedy and what uh, George Lucas or J.J. Abrams are saying is that this was, yeah, this was our plan all along. Last thing for you, the big reveal today, Palpatine apparently yes. back. Um, when you heard that as a pitch, how far back does that go when well, you that heard it? Back. That goes back to when we were talking about Force Awakens. And, you know, just the, the whole blueprint of where we've ended up now has kind of been in the works since then. The fact is that uh, when they decided to go back and, and, and talk to a bunch of people about how we might wrap up uh, nine films... Uh, they had this incredible idea to talk to George Lucas. Um, and one of the things that George had obviously uh, incorporated into his original treatments was that Palpatine was going to come back. And I love what you said about the fact that this is going to come back on Palpatine's doorstep. Uh, whether it's the expanded universe of old or it's the, the the new canon, the fact is that you can't really underestimate the impact that Palpatine had. He took all of the experience and the knowledge of his uh, Sith forebears and really, um, I think, synthesized it into uh, an incredible, incredible uh, uh, coup over the entire... Don't say coup. Okay. <laughs> don't say. I mean, but, that opens up a whole other can of worms. But, but he really did. I, I, I think that he just, he just executed this on the entire galaxy in a way that, that, that no other Sith Lord has ever done. So the fact is, he's still not, he's still not finished. Uh, and we'll talk about this in just a little bit. We can speculate, is what role 
is Palpatine going to have? Is he going to be corporeal? Is he going to be a clone? Our, our pal Paul Bateman is all over the, the Facebook right now and on our, our, our email saying, it's going to be clone. I know he's going to be clone. Ming never dies. He's, Ming he never has dies. always said that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you got FJ that. saying, it's not a clone. Shut that F up, Paul. Yes. It's not a clone. You got to read these emails. Did he say that? He did. He yeah, he shut really the did. F up. Paul. But he doesn't put the dashes in. He does the whole thing right there. I'm going to have to review um, our email. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's all this talk in, in, in conversation. What role will Palpatine play? What will he actually uh, represent in the films? We don't know. But one thing we know is that according to headlines and some of the uh, sleuthing of reporters over the last uh, day is that uh, they have confirmed that George Lucas did help J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy with the script for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And I think that's really big news. How much groveling do you think? I mean... Yeah, right. Uh, tell him I won't call him back. <laughs> How many times did they have to call him? These are the statistics I want to know as a true behind-the-scenes fan. I, I I totally agree, and we've got a mic set up, uh, I believe, in the back there. Is that uh, on? That's on. Um, Check. So if you're, we're going to be talking about the trailer, obviously. Big news. Uh, so if you do have questions or observations about the trailer, we did release our big trailer reaction show. It's available on the podcast feed at uh, rebelforceradio.com, so make sure you check that out. We had a great time really going sort of scene by scene. There were some things we missed. Uh, one thing in particular, uh, Jim, that you shared with me this morning is that the ship that you see, uh, and there, there's some debate about whether that is actually a, uh, a cityscape or whether that is that wreckage of uh, the Death Star 2 that we see later in the, in, the, uh, in the trailer, but you see that ship with those twin engines. Someone pointed out that that is the same ship in Ray's vision in The Force Awakens of the ship that left her stranded on Jakku. That's also the same ship that you see coming into whatever system that might be. Yeah, it appears to be. Yeah. Something else we talked about on our trailer review show was Ray. Trying to outrace, we assume, Kylo's new TIE fighter as it skims the surface of that sandy planet, which to me is one of the most compelling shots in the entire trailer. And you see Ray not quite outrunning it, so she does the second best thing, and that's a force flip and reverse up and over, and it goes into slow-mo. And Jason, you question the usage of slow-mo, citing... Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, saying, I don't know if that's really the vibe of Star Wars. But we have received feedback from listeners saying, yes. no, there has been slow-mo in Star Wars since Empire Strikes Back. This scene with Luke having that Force vision in the cave, obviously, is a slow-motion sequence. And there are a few okay. other... All right, all right, all right. There are okay. a few other... That's fair. Um, there are a few other like instances of that happening. It was a, I think the slow-mo effect was used to show that this is some sort of dream or illusion that he's experiencing. Right, so maybe we can take the history of Star Wars and use that to inform us with the material that's being presented to us now before we even see the film. Maybe it is a Force vision. It very well could be. It could be. Um, we're going to have more talk about the trailer, and we want to hear from all of you here um, in the... Not all of you. The, we'll be here forever. Some of you. A couple. Uh, about the trailer, because we, we, we want to make sure um, that we get your opinions about what we all saw yesterday. Uh, but here's some news. Bob Iger uh, confirmed that Disney Plus will debut over the interwebs on November 12th, and that will include the premiere of The Mandalorian. So we have a... We have a date... Not only that, but he also confirmed that the price is only $7 a month. It will include all of the Star Wars films, which is huge. And, of course, a, an incredible catalog of uh, Disney classics as well. That was great news. That's good news. But there was one little bit that I don't think was as good news. And he said that after Episode Nine that the Star Wars films will be taking a hiatus. Quote. A hiatus. So 
I guess they're going to be vacationing with Pete Nadel because Pete's been on a, uh, a hiatus since what, 2000? <laughs> 2008? Yeah, I think it was that. Yeah. That scene. No, nobody I mean, we, yeah, yeah, nobody was, No one remembers does Pete. Does anybody Nadel. remember Pete? Exactly. Back on the. Uh, the crowd out loud. The forecasting. Star Wars podcasting pioneer, Pete pioneer, Nadel. That's right. Uh, so the Star Wars film's taking a hiatus after episode nine. I mean, that's very interesting to me. And I actually think. It's a little bit sad uh, because, you know, obviously uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi had an impact on uh, the Star Wars fandom at large. There, it was very, very split. Some felt it was a great film and it was just a, a no-brainer kind of uh, continuation of the saga. Others felt that it was a betrayal of a character. And by others, I mean, you know, guys like Mark Hamill. They have some experience with uh, Star Wars and, and, and the character. But at the same time, um, it really did create this sort of fracture. Uh, yet after Solo, or excuse me, after uh, Episode Eight, we had the release of Solo that in so many ways, I think, just kind of harkened back to the tradition of Star Wars. It was this great swashbuckling adventure. We, yeah, we got, yes, it was awesome. Solo was this, I think, I think that Solo, Solo was unfairly punished by a lot of fans who were upset with Episode Eight. Punished. Die hard, die hard prequel fans know Punished. that. Uh, Punished. Punished. Um, and I think it was really unfair. And uh, uh, that not only did that lead to this hiatus that Bob Iger is talking about, but uh, perhaps a discontinuation of the standalone stories. And uh, I, my opinion is that it makes me wonder, it makes me question whether or not Disney really has the stomach to be the proprietors of the Star Wars saga moving forward. Because if they're going to just knee-jerk react to every bit of disruption in the fan community, are they really the folks that can uh, guarantee us the future of Star Wars? Well, no, I would say absolutely. I mean, the, the Disney franchise, the Disney company is proven time and time again over decades that they know what they're doing with yeah, they major did a great job franchises. With the over the last 20 years. Ooh. 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 Bring back Beaker. Yeah. Bring back I'm, Beaker. I, I am just saying that their record on, uh, yes, they've done an incredible job with Marvel, but their record is not flawless when it comes to being the, uh, the stewards of great uh, franchises and characters. That's what I'm saying. Well, I think they certainly have the muscle to provide a solid future for Star Wars. I just think maybe it was too much too fast. Sometimes I look at Disney's approach like as soon as they acquired the Star Wars franchise, they were like a rhino running headfirst into a brick wall um, trying to break through that wall. When I, I think they, they should have let um, the actual substance of the story have time to develop before they even announced a release date. It was almost like you know, Lucas passed the. He signed the paper, and then Iger signed the paper, and then Iger was just like, "Summer 2015." You know, it's just like, "Whoa, wait a second! We don't have a director, we don't have a script, we haven't done any casting, we have no crew." Summer 2019, or it's 2015. That's right, right. The Force Awakens was originally announced for summer 2015. Mm -hmm. Summer 2015, signed the paper. Yeah. Um, but, no, you have to have these pieces, pieces in place before you even announce a release date, I personally think. You can't announce a release date for a film that isn't even existing on paper. I mean, it's sure to you know, establish a goal. We'd like to have it out at summer 2015. But it was, it was such a huge PR moment and a lot of shareholders to pacify um, – and I, yeah, George you know, didn't have those shareholders, and those pesky I, shareholders. But I'm going to do what I want to do. But there may have been, <laughs> however, there may have been, and I know, you know, for us hardcore fans, it's hard to actually imagine something like this, but there may have been a level of risk also in reviving a franchise that had been dormant for a large number of years, sure, you know? Star Wars is not very bankable, you know? <laughs> Who knows how that's going to turn out for you? 
Well, I mean, n- nowadays we're sitting in the year 2019 and we're talking about Star Wars catching up to Marvel, which I never thought could actually be a possibility in terms of cinematic status. But, I mean, let's face it, Marvel rules the roost right now. They're sitting in the position Star Wars used to sit in as far as being influential in a large franchise that people get behind and support. And um, I, I don't think that's unfortunate at all. I just think that's the, the natural state of things right now. So, I, I, you know, you have to understand that it's an industry that, in, that evolves. It's a property that evolves. And it's a fan base that evolves. And so it's always, even, even though it seems like getting acquisition of the Star Wars franchise by a company like Disney is a no-brainer, it's still a four and a half billion dollar no brainer. So there's a risk involved in there yeah. too. I mean, that's there just is. not chump change. There is, and they have to be. They have to be responsible uh, officers and stewards of the money. But uh, the story that's being reported on Bloomberg is that uh, Bob, Iger, Bob Iger did say that the Star Wars uh, film franchise will go on hiatus after the December twentieth release of. The Rise of Skywalker. He says, we have not announced any specific plans for movies thereafter. Somebody let Ryan Johnson know that. because yeah, he's Well, I mean, what about Benioff and Weiss? The game? Okay, all right. Now, all right. But th- we have heard from actual outside sources. Yeah. The HBO guys have confirmed that the Benioff-Weiss duo will be working on Star Wars moving forward. But maybe this memo was just sent out like this week. Well, so it, it's quite possible that... Maybe even Benioff and Weiss, their their plug has been pulled. So I, 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 I look in ice. black and white. white he, does it say right there? He, he says, says Weiss we, is on ice? Well, no. no, no he says Weiss, Weiss on that ice? That was all me. Bob Iger. Yeah. Weiss is on ice. <laughs> he says, we have not announced any specific plans for movies thereafter. Well, that's true. There hasn't been anything specific about the Ryan Johnson trilogy um, that still lives in his head, and then the real uh, film series that's being... Uh, that's the trilogy out. I want to see. Do you guys want to see a Ryan Johnson trilogy? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. All right, all right, everyone, really? quite, quite. No, I'm taking a poll here. Okay. Everyone who wants to see a Ryan Johnson trilogy, applaud. Woo! All right? That was robust. That was robust. And everyone who doesn't want to see a Ryan Johnson trilogy, applaud. No, I definitely think it's a more positive response toward a Ryan Johnson trilogy based on the sampling we took in this room. But, I mean, I think that was about as scientific as the poll as we could possibly take (laughs) on the South Side. Who think that Rebel Force Radio listeners are some monolithic group that all think the same thing is absolutely not true? Right. Because we have varied, varied opinions uh, here in our uh, great listening audience. Uh, Bob did say that while we have not re- uh, announced any specific plans for movies thereafter, uh, there are movies in development, but we have not announced them. Somebody let Bob know. The Benny Elf and Weiss guys were talking about their movie. Moana goes to Coruscant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, however, he says um, that uh, we will take a pause, some time, and reset, because the Skywalker saga comes to an end with this ninth movie. There will be other Star Wars movies, but there will be this bit of a hiatus. Now, what is interesting about this is that the Bloomberg article says that um, Bob Iger is not concerned that consumers may be overexposed to the Star Wars brand when Mark Hamill himself thinks that, yeah, I think that people are maybe just a a little, I don't know, a little burnt out about Star Wars. Oh, well, no. No. That's Mark Hamill. Well, he he lives out on that that dome out in the middle of the (laughs) desert and... Excitement for this guy is going to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. I mean, come on. Yeah. He has no standards. But Mark did make some headlines saying that, you know, ah, nobody listens to me. And he, what, what do I know? That is true. He does say but, that a lot, doesn't yeah. he? He yeah. said that they should have taken some more time between the release of uh, Solo and, uh, or, or Episode 8 and Solo. 
uh, and they should have perhaps maybe dialed it back a bit. Bob Iger himself, not that long ago, said that uh, he realized that they might have made a miscalculation and uh, perhaps uh, had too aggressive of a timeline. But when you make a four and a half billion dollar investment, you want to make sure that your, your shareholders uh, feel pretty good about you recouping that investment. Well, uh, you know, I mean, we're dealing with a creative industry and uh, fans. I think your top priority should be the people who actually buy tickets to your damn movies, not the the shareholders. Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, hey, Paul, I'm gonna I'm gonna celebrate that bold statement with a blue milk spiked by Greedo. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you, thank you. Are we still making those or yeah. we still good there? Whip All them right. up. All right, very good. Whip them up. Who wants All the blue right. milk? Come on, whip them up. Who, he wants one. She wants one. We, we need a lot of them. Bring up some pictures. Pictures of blue milk. And make sure they are spiked by Greedo. <laughs> Una chuta. <laughs> now, the Bloomberg article does say that Star Wars is making a pivot to TV. As we mentioned, we've got a, uh, we've got a debut date of November 12th for the Disney Plus streaming service, which will include The Mandalorian. Now, does anybody know, we've, we, we're anticipating The Mandalorian panel, but has there been any discussion uh, in terms of the release uh, cadence and pacing of the episodes? Right. Are we looking at a dump of all the episodes? No, everyone's shaking their heads no. They haven't said anything about what that pacing is going to be. We'll probably figure that out uh, tomorrow yeah. with the big panel. Uh, what do you guys think? They're going to release them all at once, or we're going to blue milk this gal? <laughs> right? We're going to blue milk this gal. It's all at once. You guys are the guys in front are yelling all at once. You guys go. We're going to be binging, huh? How many blue milks do we need? I got this one. How many here. do we need? Who needs a blue milk? Everybody wants a blue milk. Raise your hands. Raise right. your hand. Some blue milks here. All right. They're, they're, hey, by the way, they're not comped. Anyone raising yeah. your hand? Yeah, right. Oh, look! All the hands go down. down. You still have to pay for it. Come on. Uh, so, so a lot of folks are saying. I'm sorry. Raise them again. Raise them again. Everyone who wants a blue milk. Spiked by Greedo. People, this is... This is for real. This is a libation that was... You're the libation guy, aren't you? Are you the libation guy? Someone gave me props for using the word libations on the show. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being an easy audience member. A lot of letters. But, uh, okay, so let's get them going. Pictures. All right. Okay, so... Uh, $7 a month, uh, Star Wars uh, films to take a hiatus, a big pivot to television. We've got The Mandalorian that's going to debut, of course, and then we've got the uh, Cassian Andor series, which I'm really excited for. I, I love this. I think also we have received confirmation this weekend that Alan Tudyk will be there providing the uh, chops behind uh, K2SO in the Cassian Streaming series. Well, I have two great. I have two great passions: awesome. yeah. uh, Star Wars and the James Bond film series. So yeah. I love this idea of spot. There we go, Bondcast. Bond All right, Bondcast. Bond this idea very of, occasional of, of Star Wars and spies. And in the thing about uh, Rogue One, I mean, the moment that I realized that wow, we were really in the thick of it was that moment in Rogue One when 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 Cassian, you know, you know, kills that guy because there's no way for him him to get out. Um, that is how dire the circumstances are for these rebels. Mm. So to have a whole series about that kind of uh, stakes is, um, I think, is going to be it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait for that. Um, now there was this little trailer that was dropped uh, yesterday, and it had uh, I think some ramifications for uh, the Star Wars saga. So if if you have questions. Thoughts, ideas, theories, please queue up. We do have a microphone set up at the, at, at the back here. But I was told, I got a text uh, early today from Kevin Lyle. And there are two things that Kevin Lyle loves. The first is making money. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to make money. And the second thing he loves is, is Star Wars, of course. So he stopped everything that he was doing in the moment and texted me and said, I just had this amazing episode nine theory and I have to share it with you. And I said what Jimmy Mack tells me all the time, save it for the show. <laughs> so we've got Kevin Lyle here from Norse Legion. And uh, Kevin, you had a theory 
about episode nine. And uh, so, so tell us, what is this theory? What was this big epiphany you had? Well, we had a long talk last night about the trailer. Probably yes. about three hours. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. it good? Is it? Wow, they're getting up when I got here, man. Jesus. Look at I, that. I stink. You're coming back. Okay. This is what happens when you follow Puppet Lando with Lyle. <laughs> Thank you. She loves it. Because I'm already worried because of the fact I've already done the math. I'm leaving here on Tuesday morning, and I'm driving back home to my home outside of New York City, and I'm going to pass Akron, Ohio at around rush hour when you're driving home <laughs> looking at television. So I'm already worried about that. Yeah, just wait till that Mandalorian series comes out, man. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully there won't be a celebration where I drive through Akron. <laughs> To get here. But anyway, yeah. so my theory was we talked last night. Yeah. We had a long discussion, and mm-hmm. Sheldon was there, and Jimmy was there, and, and Billy was there. and uh, Was it the Wizard of Oz? <laughs> <laughs> you were there. You were there. <laughs> well, I just realized Jimmy was not there, so I was wrong. Jimmy was not but anyway, there. Um, uh-uh. um, we all had different theories. We were talking about it, and, and, and the idea I, I had came actually today while I, w- while I was making money, and I stopped for one second. You're right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And thought about this, and it was really a a Joseph Campbell moment that I had mm-hmm. that um, and, and Joseph Joseph Campbell's big thing is about uh, comparative mythology and how all these things are together and that um, religion itself is always like started by a certain sect and then it's called that whether it's Calvinist or Christ or whatever mm-hmm. and then uh, you have Revenge of the Sith Return of the Jedi and the Rise of Skywalker Skywalker isn't a person it's not Anakin it's not Luke it's nobody it is the new force user way. And it's being followed. Ray is hearing it from Luke. And so it is Luke Skywalker that Rise of Skywalker is talking about, but it's not the individual. It's his spiritual way that it's time for the Jedi to end. That's my theory. Mm. And that's why I texted you today. It's time for the Jedi to end and the Skywalker to rise. Right. Skywalker's not a person. Right. It, is a, it is a force path. It's an ideal. It's, it's an, an ideal. ideal. Wow. All right. Well, I think that's pretty uh, compelling, the idea of that it's... uh, Because my hang-up with this has been that they're really going out of their way to talk about this is the end of the Skywalker saga, but at the same time, they're calling it the rise of Skywalker. So how can you have the rise of something and the end of something all in the same movie? I mean, J.J.'s a talented guy, but I mean, there's only so much someone like him can do. Okay. Right? I agree. Oh, you want more you want this more pushback? This is why he doesn't co-host Rebel Force Radio. Where Jimmy Mac is like no. <laughs> what do you want to say? I agree. I what you yeah. want I don't agree. No, it's what I'm saying is that I think that it's 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 uh it's it's an end but it's also a beginning. Which okay. is what oh, a I lot see. of storytelling yeah. is is okay. an end and a beginning. Okay. It is the end of the Skywalker saga because the Skywalker saga was about individuals whether it be Anakin as a little boy and all the way to Luke as an old man on his little island. And then now it is something totally new, which isn't a person. It is a path. Mm. It's a way of life. I like, like it. Like Christianity or to be a Calvinist or a Lutheran. Okay. So it's a sect. Right? It's, a, it, it's a denomination. I mean, one of the, uh, Dave Filoni, uh, the great Dave Filoni, has made so many incredible contributions Woo. to Star Wars Saga. Uh, he really has. Woo. And I, I resisted this at first, but... What he started to do at the knee of George, uh, George Lucas himself was to create um, this idea that there are different types of Force users, whether it be the Night Sisters or um, the Force Wielders, I think they were called in the Mortis trilogy. The Celestials. The, the Celestials. Celestials. Yes, he did expand and perhaps give us a larger view of Force use in the galaxy. And I was very um, much... Uh, uh, subscribe to the idea that it had to be, you know, light side versus dark, Sith versus Jedi. Um, but if the maker himself says that it actually opens up to all of these sort of ancillary and other ideas, and perhaps I hate to use the word denomination, but that's sort of the idea. I mean, George Lucas, when when he was asked at one time about, um, well, if there's only one God, why are there so many religions? And he says, well, we're all seeing different, uh, well, we're all seeing uh, different parts of the same elephant. Uh, but I think it's Lucas. very. I think it's very profound. He's the best Lucas. No, no, no come no, on, no, come guy. on. No, that He's other guy. Award-winning. 
Robert Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, Award winning. But he said George he Lucas said <laughs> Hip Hop won the Adam Fitz I, Award. I saw the award at your house. Two time winner. There's an actual award for that. There really is. It's not a joke. But he said we're all seeing parts of the same elephant. And I thought that was quite profound. And I think that has driven him over the years as he's working with guys like uh, Dave Filoni to create this um, very, very expansive view of the force and the practitioners of it. Um, I would love to hear other thoughts about the trailer. I think we have someone here queued up. I can't see. Hello. That's Barry Harmon. Hello. Oh, Barry Harmon. Oh, Barry right. Harmon has appeared on Rebel Force Radio yeah. as a video game expert Video for game us. expert. He's uh, well known for the website SegaBits.com. That's it. Yeah, All right. Hey, so Barry, yeah, what do you I'm say? Barry Harmon, and I wanted to follow up. I wanted to talk about Palpatine a little bit, but I did want to follow up on what Kevin was saying. I've talked to Jimmy Mack in the past, I think before I went on the show, and you brought it up where I was saying, you know, like there might be a kind of cheesy moment at the end where it's like, you know, Finn's going like, what, what, what's your name? What's your last name? You know, and she goes, oh, I think I'm a Skywalker. But I think it would be a lot stronger if, if she turns away from the Jedi, like, you know, like you're saying, maybe they find out some truth about, you know, the Sith are dead. I think the big thing is the Sith need to be dead. I don't think Palpatine's bringing the Sith back because that kind of takes away from, you know, Anakin's whole deal at the end of Return of the Jedi. But I do think that in terms of the Jedi going away, I think it might she might take on the mantle of Skywalker. And so she would be Rey Skywalker, but it wouldn't be a cheesy, like, oh, I don't have a last name. I guess I'll adopt that. It'll be more, you know, like you are saying, like, Rey as Skywalker. A mm-hmm. As a tribute, a tribute. And also carrying yeah. it on. So we will have Skywalkers moving forward, but it won't be a bloodline. I also kind of s- still believe that Rey is like the next chosen one or at very least a force manifestation so her dad's the force oh she's, you know? to- she's totally a chosen one yeah oh you um, think so oh yeah Dad. i i agree with that kevin i i always felt like uh with the reveal your parents are nobody mm-hmm. J- junk dealers on jakku well yeah you know shmi skywalker didn't realize that she was a vessel for Divine intervention, that she was a vessel for immaculate conception. She knew. She just, it was yeah. a mystery. Mm-hmm. But she gets, I mean, she wasn't. She didn't realize. <laughs> Not to discuss, you know, her personal life, but she wasn't. She knew she wasn't with anyone. What do you know about Shmi? Well, I bought, the <laughs> I, actually, I bought the Shmi. I bought the Shmi. On the next, <laughs> Maury Povich. I bought the Shmi. Skywalker. <laughs> I bought, Tatooine, Lady of the Night. Yeah, no, I bought yeah. the Shmi action figure this weekend, and she comes with a fact file, and it says who her her uh, her like allies and enemies are, yeah. and it says that her enemy is Darth Sidious. I don't know how she knew of him, but apparently <laughs> that's weird. Isn't that weird? Well, she got pregnant figure? by him. Yeah, so. it says who's her well, her ally. Come on, she right. got. Oh well. <laughs> what? Okay, I was just saying that's so, one. That's one theory. That's one, I didn't one, say it happened. The one comic book where he's got his like arms around her belly. He's like, "Hey, natural." Yeah. He's like, <laughs> "Oh wait, wait, wait! You boo me, but you don't boo that." What the? <laughs> no, he did. I'm just describing what what we saw. Can I make one comment to to what Please. Barry said? Yeah. The, and this is something that I always thought is when I saw the the uh, the last Jedi, the only the only part I liked was the when she's in the cave. And she not the cave, but the the grotto, the grotto. Yeah, and right. she says she looks at this window, and she's in this force receptor place, whatever. And she's like, "I want to see my parents. That's I want to see my parents." Mm-hmm. And and there's lots of people on the other side of that, for the lack of a better word, ice wall, whatever that was called. Right. And there's a lot of people, and it merges into one. Like she has one parent. Like Shmi had, you know, Anakin had one parent, mm-hmm. yes. so Shmi had one mm-hmm. parent. She's she's without question she's a chosen one. There's no yeah. there's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I think that would be really cool. I also think, um, you know, I've been thinking about what the coolest moment has been so far at Celebration. In the nine panel, if you were like in the house, you'd see you saw this like old guy kind of shuffle out. For half a second, I thought that was John Williams because I was like, I saw the. <laughs> oh, I was like, but I'm like, Swank thought it was. Who do you think it was? Mark Hamill. Oh God! <laughs> Surprise! Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trolling you. How did but, you think it was? You think it was I knew, no, he thought it was Mark Hamill. I I mean, needless to say, I mean, we had shit seats. I didn't know. Yeah. We were the, yeah. Well, of yeah. course, they put us back in like 106. We're all the way back in the end, and I couldn't see. And they waited a beat before they actually yeah. put the camera on Ian. Oh. And then when you saw Ian, oh, like, you oh, saw, you saw like a little person. Again. I saw a little person walk out, and I thought it was Mark Hamill. Oh. I, I, I was in the third row, so I don't know. Oh, well, of course yeah. you were. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get God, man? You guys 
guys are vicious. He's because a guy you're speaks. nine feet tall, and no one will say no to you. That's why. No. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Here's yeah, the yeah, trick. Yeah. He sneaks in with the pizza and say it's for the band. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy your loyalty, bartender. I'm paying for every one of those blue milks. I will pay for every one of them. There we go. Now, now I'm popular. So, who so had- this is how liberty dies. <laughs> you guys are so, so cheap. So who actually ordered one when I came up here and counted hands earlier? <laughs> that is your bartender. Uh, yeah, yeah, you need more hands. Or you need a tip. Uh, yeah, you guys. Wow. Wow, look at the wide look, look at this whipping up. Uh, oh, big shot, man. man. Yeah, You're all those speechy. all those all those peasants at celebration, I got these silly things I sell oh sh- um. <laughs> Hello. All Hello right, there. Paul. Hey Paul, what's Barry, that? What's I think that's that? I think that's great. Uh yeah. who do we have no, next? No, hey, well, over, uh, here, over here. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, we have on stage up on Glenn stage. ordered one and I ordered one. No, 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 no. Jimmy Mack started this whole damn process. <laughs> You're taking <laughs> your no, no, it's okay. drink. It's the Get fans. Give food. the drink to the Get fans and me. They can bring more. Fans yeah, and right me. Let's all calm down. There's right plenty here. of blue milk. Thank you. Thank oh, that, and there's that, more that, coming. No, if you, if you, I, this no, is just I how many we have brought someone in the first else round. At, the, at the mic. Uh, oh, oh, look at Glenn Nelson from High Adventure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, giving his blue milk to Jimmy Mack. Uh, we have another comment here. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Was I not the one who said into this microphone that is being amplified by this PA, bring some blue milk? Who else wants one? Remember that? Yeah, it's too late now. It's too late now. I can... show? All right. <laughs> okay, what do you got? What do you got? Hey, Cheers. my name's Phil from Chicago. Yes, um, Phil, Chicago. I've loved every second of my time here at Celebration. It's my first one ever. Oh, um, welcome. Welcome, buddy. Welcome, buddy. The positive vibes I've felt from everybody have just been overwhelming, and I'm hoping that the Star Wars community can carry this on into the yes, future. I think mm-hmm. it will. Despite the split feelings over The Last Jedi. So my question to, to you guys is, um, despite what everybody ends up feeling about uh, the rise of Skywalker... How can we, as a community, steer the conversation towards positive vibes, towards uh, just a really inclusive sense of community, despite the the, the quality uh, of it or whatever we, everybody personally feels? How can we have just a more inclusive, positive dialogue? Well, I think it's very simple. Just everyone should dye their hair purple. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. And as a matter of fact, you know, push back against The Last Jedi. I, I have a lot of... Um, of love for Star Wars. And as pushback for The Last Jedi increases, I start to feel like more like I want to push back against that because I, I love Star Wars. Um, but again, as I said, the thing that will really help with this division and, and this split of opinion that people have had about, especially the sequel films, is give us a good capper. There's a lot of pressure on J.J. Abrams. There's a lot of pressure on these people. Don't kid yourself that they're just thinking, they're just phoning it in, because they are not. And I think that we'll really have a full picture after Episode Nine is released. And I have optimism that it will be significantly satisfying for us, people who have been watching the whole thing unfold for 40 years or four minutes. It, it, you know, it all comes down to this. And, and I was encouraged by hearing J.J. Abrams state that he believes they have something very special. And I think that overconfidence right now, I think that would be a mistake. And I think J.J. Abrams is a smart enough guy to realize that. I think that he is being very authentic when he says that. And I also believe he's a very authentic Star Wars fan, just like we all are. And he wants the best for the franchise. So I have a lot of optimism right now. And quite honestly, this weekend has done a lot to make me feel much more positive on a whole about Star Wars. And we still have two more days left. So, yeah. (laughs) 
I'll drink blue milk to that. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. <laughs> oh, we've got a Rebel Force Radio T-shirt in the back. Yeah, Hello. Hey guys. Um, mine's more panel related. Yeah. And I please. wanted to just say thank you guys because for half the panel, I was absolutely in tears for the wrong reason. I was laughing my head off. As soon as Billy D. Williams hit the stage, all I heard was Puppet Lando. <laughs> Well, I didn't mean to spoil it for you, <laughs> but it looms like a shadow over everything we do here. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yes, sir. Who hey, guys, this is Eric from Phoenix. Eric from um, Phoenix, who is a veteran of Celebration One. Right? That's correct. All right. We've been all wow. Out. Eric has been in the front row. So, uh, right? So we watched the trailer, and I guess mm-hmm. my thing is the rise of Skywalker, to me, has to be about Kylo Ren. Because if you think about it, uh, Return of the Jedi is all about Anakin Skywalker returning to be a Jedi. So to me, it's about Anakin or, um, Kylo Ren getting redeemed. And um, I don't know. I was just surprised by the trailer and, and the Emperor being there. So what, what are you guys' thoughts on... How the Emperor is going to be involved in this. J.J. likes mystery boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he likes to throw things off. He didn't show us anything in the trailer. The biggest thing he showed us was the Death Star at the very end. So do you think the Emperor is really involved in this movie? Luke Skywalker was not discussed. He was not in the panel. Do you think he comes back? Well, you, you know, bigger than better than ever. Does do the narration of right. the entire trailer? But he they never huge more than anybody. Right. Yeah, but they never trailer. talked about him. They never. He said, speaks more than any other character in that in that trailer. Right, but they never said one word about Mark Hamill or Luke Skywalker. They never said Finn. They never said Rose. They never said Chewie. They I never predicted. Said, he was, he, I predicted they were with shown. Luke's. If Luke is to return in Episode Nine, I did predict that he would be absent from. The marketing, because I right. think there's a lot of mystery about this return. And I think so do you think he preserved. comes back at the end and we get something amazing at the end with him? Why at the end? Well, because... No, I don't think at the end. I think in the middle, because he will be the final threshold for the heroes to pass through. If I can say one thing, I think we're going to be really surprised. Right. I think they're going to come up with something that's totally going to just be like, wow. Dash right Rendar. Left here. <laughs> yes. Mark my words. Well, I mean, they have to make up. That's a good one, though. It's not to knock. I'd love to see Dash. Right? Not to knock episode yeah. eight, but to bring him back in an amazing way. Do you guys think we're going to see Luke Skywalker in an amazing way in the last movie? No, I think he's going to show up. Okay, in, ama- he would, in an and amazing me, way. Is that what you're you asking? You know what? Yeah. To me, uh, in the year 2019, to see Luke Skywalker show up in any damn movie is amazing. Okay, <laughs> all right. So as, as long as he shows up, That's as long true. as he shows up. All right. That's thanks. True. Yeah, thank you. I, I... Does, does everybody who has a blue milk, does anybody need one? Who else wants one? I, okay, I got to say, one, two, I, I ain't paying for those. Right? I paid for the ones this, this in the past. Off of his tab. Because you, all, cause you ordered, you came in with Billy? like 15. I was like, okay. Then you came with 15 more. I'm like, dang. <laughs> Billy Mac needs no, one. No, she's saying it's not 15. <laughs> what? 15 total. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so I can, I so can do it. Two more. Two more. And two that's more. It? Well, Billy needs one. Okay, so th- Thanks, Kevin. one. And who else? Yeah. I need hands I, up they high. Are fabulous. They I'll are buy high. his because he went to Celebration One. one? Yes. 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 Celebration yes. One. Did Glenn get one? Did Glenn get one? Okay, good. Right, Glenn's had no Glenn seven. would like this. Thank you. Yeah. Just two. Who else Glenn. likes this? Because Glenn had one. Thanks. <laughs> All right, very good. All right. Well, what we'd like to do is uh, we do have the microphone up there or back there. We also have a microphone up here as well. We want to talk a little bit about, I mean, we're, we're already three days deep into Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Uh, what about celebrity encounters? Any incredible panels? Uh, there was a big one about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Anything big that was revealed about Galaxy's Edge? Or uh, you want to cost a fortune? Any, any great uh, merchandise popcorn, finds? Wait, fifty bucks wait. for popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> we got, got, may I, Jason? Yeah, there's there's Glenn Nelson. Hey, Glenn, Glenn Nelson. Nelson. 
my best buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. In the Galaxy's Edge panel, there was not much revealed about Galaxy's Edge, but there were a few tidbits. <laughs> Stop, get off the microphone, Jesus. Oh, sorry. Just know you're guys, like, know I'm so grabby. Stop Stop musician. I'm so grabby. He's a professional musician. What's oh, he's like you're eating, the, you're I'm eating singer, the microphone. Jimmy, I'm a singer, I, I, You're right. eating the microphone. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay, Always okay. shake it with your stomach. Test one. Test two, check one. Oh, two. Was, check. Is this good? Off the microphone. Let right, the man right. speak. Come on. Let the man All right. speak. Everyone settle down. All right. Chill out. Um, like Billy D. said, we <laughs> smack you in the chest. All right. Billy D. said, we smack you in the chest. All right. Serious thing yes. to do. Anyway, back to uh, that panel. Yeah. Um. For me, being a, uh, a musician, it was very cool when they revealed the music that you will hear at Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. And one of the things is there's a B-side to Figure and Dan and the modal nodes A-side. There's a B-side, and, and they no. wrote it and, uh, it's, and, and they played it. And it is awesome. It is the same. It, it sounds perfect, but it sounds totally new at the same time, and you'll all love it when you hear it. It's great. I, I, I missed that. We, uh, Billy Mac and I were uh, in the hotel. We were streaming the, the panel, uh, but was there any discussion about who wrote it? No, no it's not John really? Williams. But, but it's Williams, not John Williams. Williams did write the whole suite to the whole park, right. which will be piped through, I assume, all the time. But and in this particular uh, instance that you're talking about, it's the B-side of the modal notes, great hit that they had there on Tatooine. Right. Same song. <laughs> right. And, uh, it, wasn't it, it a cantina, it, but wasn't there two cantina themes? There was a cantina theme one There's and a two. beat theme as well. Yeah, there's like the one where like Han the shot or, let's see, Greedo, which by the way, he shot right. first. There's already a B-side. They're, the, they're playing the B-side. It's an EP. But there's already It's a third song. It's so, awesome. So we and got a third also song a, here. a droid band that wrote a droid song, which is not as good, but... <laughs> are, are they from are, are they from Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> but the Williams piece is fantastic. So yeah, absolutely. The music, it is. I mean, it is going to be epic. It is going to be incredible. But they didn't show you very much at the panel. They just kind of teased you. But but for me, the music thing was cool. And uh, yeah, excellent. And they have Hondo Onaka. Hey. Who doesn't love Hondo and I? All right. Uh, let, we got time for, for one more. Uh, this has been an incredible uh, couple of days. Any, we got one more back here. Yes, this is Blake from uh, Melbourne, Florida. Blake from Florida. Blake. All right. Yeah. I bet about you were happy Orlando. about celebrations. So I, yeah. Chicago. I'm getting, right. I'm getting in line you... now for when I get back. So when it opens in August, I'll be ready. <laughs> I love that yeah. you have to come to Chicago after all the times I've had to go to Florida for Star Wars. I know, Wars. I know. I just, yeah, there is a little bit of payback there, Billy Mack. No, I, but uh, I, today I wasn't there, but I saw it on my phone. Today was the big panel for the, the new EA video game, uh, Jedi yes! Fallen yes! Fall Order. Yes! Yes! You know, um, now, I, this is big because I'm a big video game guy. I'm sure a lot of people in here are, too. Right. I Barry Harmon is a big yeah. video game guy. Big it's thing very, has very... been the past couple of years, EA has not released a big... You know, Star Wars video games have now since Battlefront 2. We all know the controversy that's come out with that. And now this is single single player focus, no microtransactions. Oh. It's only oh. nothing online. There you go. Yeah. So I we wanna know, I wanna know what your guys' feelings on this on this game is and the panel and how it all went down. I myself am very excited. This is a huge news. I mean we have so as a hardcore video game fan, because I know a lot of hardcore video game fans have been disappointed. With the way that EA has been sluggish. Yeah. I mean, we had Barry Harmon on the show recently. He was mm-hmm. talking to us about it. He, he broke it down with some very solid analysis. It's just, it's a slow release. It's a slow burn. And then when you get it, it's like, oh, you have to buy all this. You have to get these loot crates. You have yeah. Yeah, and the And the play is not as satisfactory. And the big, EA's had the license for how many years now? It's been more than five years, and they've released, I think, two games, Belfort 1 and 2. Right. And uh, uh, not, uh, not an the best game reception and the most. a sequel. Wow, yeah. that's So, I mean, bad. really, two games. That's it. And how many They're years? like the Jets of, uh, of video games. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great oh, record. And I'm from uh, New York, and I said that. Man. Well, I'm more interested in what you think. What do you think about what you saw? I think this panel? is great. Look, I'm a, who are playing Knights of the Old Republic? Remember yeah. that? Thank you. The, now, the, to me, I mean, I know there's been a lot of great single-player Star Wars games since then, but those are the good old days of Star Wars single-player games. Back then, we're talking years ago. Yeah. Years ago, we have not had a good single-player-focused Star Wars game yeah. 
in a long time. Yeah, it's about time. And we're getting it right now. And this is exactly what we want as fans. This is what we want. That's right. Mm-hmm. Thank That's God. Right. All right. It's a Thank great you. time to be a Star Wars fan. See that clapping thing we did? That. Oh, I can't believe that two hours has gone by. I love the clapping thing. Can I call all of you guys next week when we record the show in our basement? And you can all be with us and clap over the closing music. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Once again, Mr. Jason Swank. going to do it for us this week here. Well, not for this week. That's going to do it for us for right now here at our big uh, patron exclusive St- Rebel Force Radio episode as we celebrate the third day of Star Wars Celebration Chicago. <laughs> Huge thanks to all of you for being here and uh, a special thanks for your support of us here at rebelforceradio.com. Uh, the email address, if you would like to uh, send us such communications. Uh, show at rebelforceradio.com. Don't do all line those plugs. Stop it. We, they all know. We say the same stuff every week. It's Patreon. They know you guys left and Come they know on. all of you. They, they, this, this is our Patreon audience. These are our... our I don't know what the hell else to do if I don't read this. I mean, these are the best listeners. They don't need to hear all that stuff. I only say because I want to party with you guys now. I, I don't want to hear all these plugs. I want to party with you guys. We're going to drink this place dry of blue milk. We're drinking all their blue milk. We're going to be out there sucking on the teat of the sea cow. Okay? That's why, that's why I came to Chicago. Oh, I live here. That's right. Yeah, let, the, let, the man, let the man talk for crying out loud. I if you'd like to leave a review, no, don't do all that. Come on, seriously. You can do so on iTunes. Make it good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jimmy Mac. And remember, oh, you're, 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 you're jumping the gun. You're jumping the gun. Man, I want to party with you guys. I don't want to wait anymore. I just wanted. I mean, can, can I get a chick? Can I get one Jason chance? Jason Swank. Can I get one chance? Yeah. Jason Swank. Jason Swank. I mean, this. Is, I mean, this guy's to me at least. He's the original Star Wars podcaster. He's uh, the first I ever listened to. I was a fan of this guy long before I actually started collaborating with him. Long before I started actually talking with him week after week about Star Wars. When, when, the, when the prospect was actually presented to me that I can be there with him every week, I actually was like, oh, I don't know. I, just, I, I shouldn't. It, it's, it's too much. He's too good. I, I said, Jason, I would listen to you just talk about Star Wars by yourself. And I said, who's this a-hole? <laughs> so I called him back. I, and then I called him back again. And I, so I left him a message on his answering machine. And I said, Jason, if you ever need someone to talk to about Star Wars with every week, I'm here. And after a while, he finally he called me back. And here yes, we sir. are tonight with all, all you guys. All years later. The greatest listening audience that we could ever ask for. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Kevin has something to say. I hope it's good after that. Yeah, I will. In, in, instead of like uh, promoting my company, Norse Legion, I, I'd like to admonish Chris Mocked for coming to this late, Chris Mocked. You came an hour late, Chris Mocked. There he is. Is Look he there? Chris, Chris ladies and gentlemen, come on up here real fast. And, and Sheldon? Sheldon, Sheldon came late. Sheldon's son came late. Look at all these Chris late Mocked numbers. came late. Get up here, Chris Mocked. Here's I would like to say. He's a Hello, I'm Chris, I'm Chris Mock, and I want to say yeah, like, Family member. I'm Chris Mock. I'm not like, Sheldon. every time I hang out with you guys, I get shit-faced, you know? All right, all right, all right. Stop everything. All right. Stop all everything. Right. Stop, no. 
Sheldon, Sheldon has a special presentation. Such, wait, 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 wait. He has something to tell us. There was a special request I heard about from... Uh, a boot, he said. A, a boot. <laughs> Canadian. From Mr. Lyle, and I'd just like to pr- uh, present that to him now. What? Oh, this is, this is not going to be good. There it is. He's handing him something. Yes. It's a trading card. It's a, it's a trading, trading card autographed by Canadian Sheldon Norton, <laughs> who is at Star Wars Celebration, Oot oh, in a Boot. Yes. All right, so this guy, this guy interrupted the sign-off to give away an autograph of himself. <laughs> and you asked Rebel Force Radio trading cards are available here. Oh, Our friend uh, Chris, from Cleveland, <laughs> Chris from Cleveland is here. Chris from Cleveland. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get up, Chris has What's a special up, giveaway for everyone, an exclusive for our amazing Patreon audience who are here yeah. tonight. So if you're at Reggie's, who got the button? The Puppet Lando button. All yeah, right. Puppet Lando button we handed out. Well, Chris handed out. We it have out. a Rebel Force Radio's Puppet Lando face cutout mask that you guys can all wear based on the C-3PO's breakfast cereal. All right. We want to see you guys wearing this on the Star Wars Celebration show floor. We love Puppet Lando. At McCormick Place. If we find you... I will give you $10 out of my pocket. There you go. You heard it. If I find you wearing that mask, and I have to find you. You don't find me. I find you. A crisp $10 bill for cosplaying as Puppet Lando at Star Wars Celebration Chicago. All right. How about it for Chris from Cleveland? It is... Millennial Chris. We also have Rebel Force Radio trading cards, badges, stickers, all kind of cool stuff for you. Just see Chris right over here. All right. All right. That's it. We're out of here. We love you all so much. We'll see you next time here on Rebel Force Radio. For Rebel Force Radio, let's do it one more time. I'm Jason. I'm Jimmy Mack. And remember, Force will be with you always. All right, that was great.